90%, 98% of scholars, theologians, universities, colleges would disagree with what I'm going to tell you this morning. Uh, most modern Christians would disagree with what I'm going to tell you this morning. But I don't give a rip what they tell you or disagree with this morning. Amen. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost of God has given me That's this morning. Right. Uh, we're going to start this morning by going to the Lord in prayer. I might say another thing or two and then we'll have Sister Nikki start a clip this morning. Father, I want to thank you for allowing us to gather in your house this morning. God, I pray you would bless each and every person that's in here this morning, Lord, with your truth. Lord, with your providence, God, Lord, that you would show us maybe, maybe one of the many reasons. I believe there's more than just one reason, but one of the main reasons the church is in the shape that it's in this morning across the world today, Father. God, I don't doubt for a second that you give me this message and these past couple messages. I don't doubt for a second that you haven't breathed into me and uh, breathed into you, your word and breathed into the notes and breathed into the uh, clips as far as getting them organized and getting it settled so people can see just what's happening today, Father Lord. I know there's far worse and far more uh, clips that I could have had Sister Nikki put on this, but uh, Lord, I figure we just give them a taste. A dab will do you for now, Father. Uh, Lord, if you move to give us some more uh, on this eventually here, here soon, Father God, I pray you would just give me the same liberty, the same courage, the same outpouring of the Holy Ghost as you have in just this one today, Father Lord. I pray that you would help each and every one of us, Father Lord, to seek for truth, to know what is truth, Father Lord, to not doubt truth today, Father. Lord, I pray you would do that in the mighty name of Jesus. You would anoint this service under, under and through his blood this morning, Father God, Lord, that you would just touch each and every person in this sanctuary today and those that may be listening live. Father, I love you. I praise you. And I ask it all in the name of Jesus and by his precious blood. And everyone said amen and amen. amen. Now, uh, I'm going to have Nikki stop in a few spots because I, I don't know how many people will know some of the people that will come across or um, things of that nature. So I will have her pause. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I had to have her cut because other people that shot these would put a bunch of stuff in between them. Uh, I'm not a liar today. I will give you the links to them if you think anyone ever thinks that we cut this and chopped it so we can make it say what we wanted. That didn't happen. Amen. I don't think, surely to goodness, anyone here would think that about me. But I did have her trim a lot of stuff in between what the actual preachers were saying because another guy would jump on and share some scripture. I'm not trying to cut the word of God out of it, but just to give you to where what they're saying and how um, atrocious it is, how her heresy it is, how wicked and ungodly it is, you're going to see that this morning. And uh, as I prayed, there, I could have, I could have, buddy, I could have racked up hours of this stuff and, and sent it to her in hours and hours and some of it a little bit worse That's than right. what you're going to see this Amen. morning. But I just want to give you a good taste of it here this morning right off and I'm going to get up and I'm going to do my best to hurry and preach. It will be a little longer probably than your average Sunday, Amen. but we're already locked in all day That's to go right. out here and eat. We're already locked in the rest of the day to come back here and listen to Charlie. So let's just get something from the Lord this morning and uh, just just keep an open mind this morning and really understand the shape the modern church is in. If you can't see, um, I didn't have my mic on this whole time, but I feel like I've been yelling. If you can't if you can't see this morning, I would encourage you to stand up or get somewhere where you can watch and, and, and get a little dose of it this morning. This morning, every day, every one of us to realize when we obey God, we're not doing it for God. I mean, that's one way to look at it. We're doing it for ourselves. Because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gives Him the greatest joy this morning. So I want you to know this morning, just do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God, really. You're doing it for yourself. Because that's what makes God happy. Amen. Let's open up. It's a message of hope. Usually delivered. Is anyone who that was? Mark Smiles. It's Joel Steen's wife. He's one of the biggest pastors mean. in America. Uh, I mean, what's Lakewood's congregation, Jeremy? You remember it's over 20 some thousand. Uh, every Sunday morning, that's his wife. And if you, can everyone hear it this morning? Yeah. Okay. So, obviously, what she said, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try to speak to everyone, but she said, You don't go to church for God. You do it for yourself. Make yourself happy. Stuff here, me was teaching us about. Uh, we're going to look at Joel Steen now. Now, one of the things I want to say when we get into one of Joel Steen's um, talks with Opal Windbag here, he's going to have. Uh, he says stuff that it, it really prances around truth, but I want you to look at two things. I want you to notice how gut shot he is, having to speak the truth, how bothered you can see just the, 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 the sickness to his stomach to speak the truth. You can see that in this video. And then he'll say some things that are pretty unscriptural in a sense, too. You just got to really uh, pay attention this morning. Go ahead, just a minute.
How would you explain God to a non-believer? How would you explain God as the creator, a heavenly father of someone that wants to be in relationship with you? Just um, as somebody that's for you, as a friend. Okay, so here's the big question. Are there many paths to get to the one God? Well, I believe open that there I believe that Jesus is the way to the one God. But I believe there are many paths to Jesus. You know, you don't know how Jesus would reveal himself to somebody. So I'm not into excluding people. Jesus can reveal himself to anybody. Does that mean that all people, all races, obviously, in your church, we see all people, all races. I can't imagine that you have 16,000 people in there and that none of them would be gay. So are gay people also included? Absolutely. Anybody is. You know, you know, Oprah, we sometimes make a, I say we, maybe the Christian community makes a bigger deal out of gay, out of being gay, but... Will a gay person be accepted into heaven? as you see it. Well, I believe they will. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that... Uh, if they repent! You know, <laughs> if we... You have to have forgiveness for your sins, but, you know, sometimes we look at gay being, you know, a bigger sin than being proud or being, you know, not telling the truth. I don't think God categorizes sins. I think we're all changing and, you know, I'd love to think that we're all going to be without one sin. I hope that's true, but I don't think, I don't think any of us would make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, I would encourage people to be willing to to change and grow and you know if you've got a problem with your temper let's let's keep growing but i think that it's going to be open for all of us or we wouldn't have a chance but does that mean that you're saying i just because i want to be clear and i don't want to, to interpret anything that isn't does that mean that you're saying that you believe that being gay would is a sin i believe that being i believe that homosexuality is shown as a sin in the scripture i do you got your idea. i do that's just that's just the way mm. i mean my, you know, Oprah, it's a hard thing in a sense because I'm not, I'm for everybody. I'm not against anybody. I don't think anybody's second class. But when I read the scripture, I just, with good faith, I can't see that it, it doesn't show that that's not, that that being a sin. That it is. Does he have a King James? <coughs> Do you believe that only Christians can be in relationship with God? No, I believe that when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, in the way I read that, Jesus said he is the he's the road marker. Social issues that that young people are particularly passionate about, like gay marriage, abortion. Like how do you address those types of things? So we're gonna go right there. Yeah, um, I thought we'll go right. hard yeah. and then we'll come down. It's only an hour show. I need to ring that bell. I think our, our job is still to help people not necessarily change how they think. So it's not a sin in your church to have an abortion? Um, that's the kind of conversation we would have finding out your story, where you're from, what you're doing. Like, like yeah, where you're you from matters if you judge. kill a baby. Oh my gosh. We've talked to other religious leaders on the show about whether politics and religion are mixed together. We do have the separation of church and state. So you're really not supposed to uh, endorse any candidates, for example, from the pulpit. Yeah. Do you do that? Or how do you feel about that? I don't want to get in trouble. Um, <laughs> I, we keep it really straight late. You called out President Trump on Twitter. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, I thought that was very brave and I, and I wondered did you worry about losing losing parishioners and, and also um, did you get a lot of pushback for that yeah yes <laughs> yes and yes I think it's my job I think you guys spoke briefly before about white privilege I think that I have a double issue with white privilege and preacher privilege because if you're white in this country you do have a platform others don't one thing that I really want to commend you on is that um, you have been very vocal um, in support of black lives I mean, here's, here's the man in America this morning, Kirk, right here. Trash. In Romans, that what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature. What does that mean? The law wasn't enough level <coughs> to change a human heart. Because try as we might, we could not keep the law. And what will really turn your heart to God is not when you hear his laws, which were given for our good, by the way, but they were powerless because... There wasn't enough leverage in our action to keep the law. So what God did when he sent his son, and this is why we get excited in church, and this is why tears fill our eyes when we think about Jesus, and this is why the gospel is still good news in the world today, because God broke the law for love. <laughs> good God. to every sinner, God broke the law for love. So... 
in raising three of my own now. I'm sitting here thinking like, what do I want them to copy of me? And what do I want them to cast out? <laughs> I feel like since they have my genetics, it's my job <laughs> to, to help shepherd them through some of this stuff. And it's really important that I disciple them as, as a dad. I want to disciple my, my kids, not through a class. I don't really think they need another class for me, especially since I'm a preacher. They get to hear my words. I wouldn't say that. But in what I do and what I show them, and not just about Bible verses, Graham's 13 and Elijah 16. One thing I really thank God for is I've had the opportunity to work out with Elijah the last uh, couple of years. But I kind of turned the workout room that's in our house into a little bit of a seminary study, like a, a laboratory where I'm not only showing him how to do certain exercises, but I don't know if I told you this way, I've been taking him through the top 100 rock albums of all time. <laughs> Train up a child in the way that they should go. And the way that they should go is Led, Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimi Hendrix, Little Wayne, one of the greatest guitar intros of all time. I learned it when I was 14. And LJ Elijah says to me, this guy's certain Mike McCready, 1991, because he didn't know who was copying who. And I said, no, boy. <laughs> you don't have to grow up and, and be a Christian, but you will know that Jimi Hendrix. Oh, my God. <laughs> there are some things that are not in the ghost. Oh, my gosh. And Jimmy's not copying them. And uh, give me that, what I handed you before we walked up. I disciple him in so many different ways. I'm pretty proud of myself. I show him. Um... Any questions for Miss Pentecost? I like your eyeshadow. Oh, thank you. This is a drag queen. You like her eyeshadow. That's great. Yeah. Oh, gee, Maybe she'll let you borrow it. When you're older, when you're allowed to wear makeup. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things I think is great about Miss Pentecost is she reminds us that we we follow a God who calls us to not conform to things of this world. Uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that means that what I think today may have to change tomorrow if I continue to renew my mind. And it's so cool that we serve a God that calls us to continue to grow and continue to, to change into something new uh, and to not be bound by the ways that the world confines us sometimes, that, that we're supposed to live differently. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. You know, take it all the way back into the Old Testament, and the Muslim and you, we actually serve the same God, Allah, to a Muslim, to us, our Father, God. That was uh, Brian Houston. He's the, the main guy at Hillsong. He's also uh, a pedophile. Yeah, and the other guy we showed earlier, the real goofy-looking Lentz, that's the that used to be the pastor of Hillsong here in America. I'm having Sister Nikki stop here. I'd never heard of this church. Uh, I didn't come across this clip. I come across something. She's going to put some of the music they sing at their church at the end of this. And she found this clip and was able to send it to me, uh, not only to raise my blood pressure, but also to uh, uh, put in this. This is this is a church called Flat Irons Church, and their congregation was 19,000. Uh, they have different campuses, whatever that means. I didn't know churches were campuses, but um, I, I want you to hear... Sister Nikki's got the music. What they do is they play worldly music in their church. Well, he got called out on it. Uh, so here, he, he has a clip here justifying it. I want you to hear how he twists the scripture, but I want you to hear how he throws his own self into it and, and really admits what's coming out of his heart when he says, sometimes we just do it that way because we really like it. And uh, it ain't about what we like in the Lord's house. Oh, my gosh, so, yeah. Uh, I want you, this will be the longest clip we have. It's not real, real long, but it'll be one of the longest. Then Sister Nikki's going to share some tell you who it is in case anyone here doesn't know who it is. So. so that's what we're passionate about. But given our level of creativity, what will Flatters leverage to accomplish what God has told us to do? Answer, everything's on the table. Everything's on the Everything table. in our world is on the table. Everything we can lay our hands on. They said things like this, your own gods, they're false. 
But your own gods say this. Your own priests say this. Your own philosophers and artists are asking great questions, but they're coming up with really bad answers because the answer can only be found in the truth that comes from Jesus. Which, let me just answer a bunch of emails real quick, all right? This is why we play music from, with, from everyone, from the Talking Heads to Eminem to Kendrick on Easter to Brad Paisley and everyone in between. Not because we approve of those people. Not because we approve of their lifestyle. Not because we give you know, Eminem a, a, a pass when he treats women great. We don't believe that. We don't believe that at all. We, we're not saying anything about the artists, all right? But here's why we do that. Because they are asking great questions. Questions the church is afraid to ask. Questions about love and about life and about sex and about identity, about value, about purpose that can only be answered and found in Jesus. That's why we do the music we do. And I'll be honest with you, all right, I'm just to be really honest with you. Sometimes we'll, we'll just play a song. It is an awesome song. That's all Skinner, any, anything, all right, all right? We'll play, and it reflects something good that's been given to us from God, like love mm -hmm. or passion or sex in marriage, intimacy, where to look for hope or where not to look for hope, and your heart is falling apart. Listen, we'll, we'll play songs whether they mention Jesus or not because the truth they speak of comes directly from Jesus. And sometimes, again, throw those cards on the table, the only win we need in order to play some song is for somebody to unclench their fist and take a breath and stop staring at the roof because you're surprised it didn't fall in the moment you came to church, which is what you thought would happen. Right? Just take a breath, sit in here and listen to some good music, and then maybe unclench your fist, lean back, and maybe, maybe give Jesus a chance. Everything we do is for that reason. Everything, right? Volume, lights, media, coffee, bagels, tattoo wall. It's not because we found a verse that says that's how you must do it in church. A lot of times, just we just like it that way. We, we like it loud. If you don't like loud music, you're going to hate it here, right? Because we like it loud and engaging. And we want to leverage as much creativity that God has entrusted to us in a way that prepares the way for people to bump into Jesus. And we'll use any and every methodology we can, which will always change. We will not be even doing the same things at Flatirons 10 years from now that we're doing today. But our, but our message will be the same. That will never, ever, ever change. Again, you might not like the volume of the song selection. You may get in your car and go, I just can't believe they, they played that song. And that's fine. That's personal taste. But don't try to make the claim that it's not biblical or spiritual. You can't find that. Oh. So Paul writes this. He writes this to a church that's, that's arguing about this kind of stuff. He says this. But why should my freedom or my liberty be determined by somebody else's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced? Why are you being critical of me because of that for which I give thanks? And I love this. So, there's all things he's been criticized for. Whether you eat that or drink that or whatever you do, however loud you play it, no matter if there's drums or an organ, whatever you do, let's just use the, the just say that last that sentence together. One, two, three. Do all to the glory of God. Everything's on the table. As long as you're doing it for the glory of God. Give no offense. Don't put a wall Especially somebody that's looking for Jesus. Don't put up a wall to Jews or to Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, this is for Christians, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many. Christians, you got to get to a point where you're going, this isn't all about me anymore. Why, what is it about? Last five words. Let's just say it together. One, two, three. That they may be saved. Hey, you're saved. You're fine. Oh, my God. Oh my God. You know what? Who, who has a problem with that? You know, there's a problem with that. People don't know anybody that's not saved. The only people I know are Christians. They all agree with me. So yeah, you know who loves that verse? People who say, I don't even know where my son is right now. I don't know where my dad is right now. I'm really, really worried about my kids. I'm really, really worried about my, 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 my best friend. They, they lean in that going, finally a church maybe cares about somebody I care about. Willing to put their music aside so that he can come in here, unclench his fist, and maybe take a breath, maybe a breath of life for the first time. Listen, okay, there's a... Make the rest of you mad, right? Just, just because you slap a cross on the roof of a building or hang a picture of Jesus on the wall, that doesn't make it a church. And a symbol or a picture has never saved anyone. I've been in a lot of buildings who point at a cross or a picture of Jesus and saying, that's what makes us a church. They just don't talk about him. They don't teach about him, let alone become anything like him and love the people that he came to seek and save. You tell me. You tell me what makes a more excellent environment that reflects Jesus. A room that has a big shiny cross hanging on the wall, and there's nothing wrong with that. Or a group of people trying imperfectly, but we are trying to become the same kind of people as the man who hung on. And here's, this is his church here playing. This is Nirvana. I don't know how many people know who. They sing the whole.
whole song, Nirvana was their main singer was Kurt Cobain, an avid dope user. I mean, there was nothing God about that, and this is how they, they want to present the worship of God in their church. You can go the next one. We didn't do the whole song. Okay, so that was Eminem. Um, like he said earlier in the video, we, we know Eminem doesn't treat women good. Be surprised how many feminists love Eminem, but he talks about how worthless and useless they are, and he's got songs about it. He's got a guy that, uh, a song about a guy killing his wife and locking her in the door, driving off the bridge with her and murdering her. Um, He's a famous rap guy. He's got a song called Rap God where he portrays himself as a god in rap. Once again, that's how they put it. They, they incorporate that into their worship of the holy god, the three times holy god. So, um, we had some... Sorry, I don't know what right. happened. I'm just going to let the last ones play through since it ain't pausing for Nikki. Give her a break. Okay. Bye -bye. No, I'm not. That's Bohemian Rhapsody. Um... Lead singer Queen, for those of you who don't know, he died from uh, complications of AIDS because he was a homosexual. That's that's who they're incorporating into their worship here. If you sit in here this morning and go, I don't understand what's wrong with that, you need to get saved. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, and how many people are looking at that? Thousands upon thousands. Oh my that's, not even, I just wanna, that's not even half of the videos that they have. They've got like 157 songs that they have uploaded on. Buddy, I could have stacked them in that clip like cordwood, but for the sake of time. See, I, I like the weeping because we need to weep for our church. Amen. And, uh, I, I try to be a weeper, Brother Gary, like like you, but I, I get so stinking mad at the at the heresy and the disgust, just the disgustingness altogether of uh, what's going on. And and I, I'm asked this question because I preach what's happened to the church. Uh, first week was our shout. Uh, second week was our weeping, and this morning is going to be um, not so much a question as what I think God's given me liberty to tell you this morning. Our authority. I think our authority is what's happened to the church. Um, you guys remember here a while back I preached about rebellion and talked about rebellion. Uh, you know what rebelling is, correct, this morning? It's it's rebelling against authority. And uh, I'm going to share one verse of Scripture with you in the book of Hebrews, um, uh, chapter 4, verse 12. It's a famous Scripture. But Paul says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, you are entitled as an American this morning to agree with every word I'm about to say. You're entitled to think I'm way off base. That's okay. It, it, it's no skin off my back this morning if you disagree with this message. But the only thing I have been able to calculate in my studying, as much studying as I have done in the last six months, the one thing that I have found out it ever, is everyone's running from the, the old book. That, that, that's that's it. right. Yeah. And you can Amen. disagree with that all you want. I, I know people think they've got, uh, we had one in here, I'm not going to share a name, but we had one that literally experienced what I taught about Wednesday night last weekend with the whole, I've got a degree. Just because you've got a degree don't make you any stinking that's smarter right. than anybody Amen. else. Amen. The teacher of this book is the Holy Ghost, not a professor. Amen. Now, you can get education, you can get that, but the one that's supposed to instruct you in this book, in the oracles of God, the ways of God, the things of God, what God expects of you is the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's His job. 
Amen? Amen. Now the Word of God is sharp, quick, powerful than any two-edged sword. What has happened to the church this morning? I'm going to say our authority. Our final authority. Nobody has a final authority in, anymore, and I'm not boasting about this church, other than people like us that have settled it in our hearts that God give us a book that is perfect, right. that is infallible, right. that is authoritative, right. Right. that is the way God would have us to go. Yeah. And, and, and that's the, the problem you see today is now we have many authorities. Right. Amen? Amen. We got many authorities. I'm going to go as fast as I can this morning, but I want you to hear this. Uh, did, what did the devil say in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14? He said, I will ascend above the height of the clouds, and I will be like what? The Most High. Yep, that's, right. that's his purpose, is to be like God. He wants to, uh, and I'm going to deal with a good verse this morning pertaining to all this, but, but he wants to be like God. The devil is a counterfeit of God. Everybody got that? Right. Paul said, uh, marvel not for even Lucifer himself was transformed into an angel of what? Of light. He, he's a mimicker. He can mimic God. He's, he, he can make things appear as if they're good, but there's just enough in it to snatch you up and rip his claws into you and pull you the other direction. Now, here's a verse I had never knew until the other day in the modern versions, but if you go to the book of Ephesians in your 1611, chapter 5, verse 1, Paul says, Be therefore followers, everybody say followers, followers. of God. If you go to it, and I'm just using the ESV because that's probably the, one of the most popular versions that's catching the most traction today, it says, Be ye therefore, uh, or it says, Be imitators of God. And you say, well, followers imitating, that's sort of the same thing. Well, you're dealing with the definition, man. In the 1828, you know what the word imitate means? I found this interesting, to counterfeit. That's right. To counterfeit. And, and you can find a bunch of other definitions for that, but I, I'm looking for the one that the enemy's using today. Right. I, I'm not, I, I know what God wants me to do. I'm looking, I'm out for, my radar was on which one the enemy had intended when that, that verse of Scripture was twisted and reworded this morning. Right. He wants you to be a counterfeit of God. He wants you to be an imitator of God. See, we're to be followers. If you look up following the 1828, it means pursue, go after, embrace, obey, observe, and practice. Amen. That's a vast different That's than right. being a counterfeit right. of God this morning. Everybody got that? Yeah. I'm going to say this. There's over 50 English versions out today, up to date. Are they all God's Word? Are they all God's word? Did, did God give us over 50 different English no. versions today? No. That way we can do what I'm fixing to show you this morning and ask you. But listen to me. Imitators versus followers. What is a counterfeit? It looks the same, but it's different. Uh, we, we, when we hear the word counterfeit, especially being American, we immediately think of what? Money. Money. And, and, and uh, there, there's always some truth in a lie, right? Just like a counterfeit bill to the naked eye, it looks like it's, a re really, it's really money. Amen? Amen. They've got ways now with markers to mark it. Used to. I'm going to deal with that the way they used to look at it and, and examine it. But it looks the same. And, and, and there's always some truth in a lie. I want to say this. Satan is the, the greatest counterfeiter of all time. Right. And, and if you don't believe that this morning, like I shared Wednesday night, what was his first counterfeit he offered man after he was created? A counterfeit of God's Word. Right. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Yea, hath God said. Right. He said, here, I know what, I know, Eve, I know you, you verbatim told me what God said, but I'm going to put a little seed out and say, yea, hath God said. Did He really mean you'll be like that? Is that what He really meant to say? You, you see, one of our greatest enemies today is, is obviously the devil, but it's our, our, our questioning and our second guessing the Word of God. When God says it, and we know God said it, but we're like, man, did He really mean that to me? Is that really the way I'm supposed to approach that? Is that really what I'm supposed to do? Is that really where He wants me to go? That, that That's the enemy speaking right. that to you. It's always been an attack on the Word of God. Amen. See, Amen. see, I feel like a, a kid on Christmas morning that got the toy he wanted in the research I've been doing because I feel like God has showed me something that a lot of people ain't getting today. And I don't mean that He's speaking to me, whereas He won't speak to other people. I meant that because I have sought Him diligently, He has rewarded me with something. He has showed me, and many others, I'm not the only one, I'm not saying I'm the only one, but many others, what the problem is today in the world church, in the church across the world today. And what we just watched, that's heresy. That's blasphemy. God, God ain't within 10 miles of that junk today. You, you say, oh no, no, you, preacher, you're just me. That, that's what them books have got you to think about. That's right. Amen. And that's called Amen. ecumenical movement. That's so we can all be one big family. Catholic, Muslim. He said, us us and the Muslims serve the same God. 
When you get a man to get up from the pulpit and say that, you got a bunch of lukewarm Laodicean Christians That's that right. won't study nothing. Amen. Oh, they say, well, Brian Houston said it, so it must be truth. And then their kids get indoctrinated, indoctrinated, indoctrinated. And here we are now with this generation. How did we get here? What happened? I think it's because we've got rid of our authority That's today. Right. I, I, I don't think, I believe that without a shadow of a doubt. That there's something about that book over all other books I've ever read in my life. Buddy that cuts and pierces Amen. and corrects and teaches Amen. and encourages me and lifts me up. All oh, oh, I, I, I can't. Y'all ain't ready for it yet. Uh, Genesis three one. Yea, hath God said. Uh, y everyone agree that we're in the last days. Amen. Amen. A strong delusion that they would bring a lie. They would believe a lie. Yep. Right. You know, it, it's like yesterday. I come up here to the church. Sister Nikki was showing me this, and we were setting everything up to see how it worked. Mm -hmm. And on my way home, I feel like God just sort of. Uh, dinged in me a revelation of some sort, if that's what you want to call it. And it, it, it wasn't so much a revelation because it's where this has been headed this whole time. But I began thinking about the strong delusion that they would believe a lie, having itchy ears, hipping to themselves teachers. Uh, what was the last one? Won't endure sound doctrine. Right. Amen. Most Christians today agree with that prophecy, believe that prophecy is true, believe for that. <laughs> but nobody wants to look at the details of that right. and say, what's caused that? How, how, how do you get a generation to not endure sound doctrine anymore? How, how do you get how do you get a, a generation that that wants their ears tickled and they want to heap to themselves teachers? How do you get that today? You got to get rid of the authority. That's right. it, it, it's the word of God today, church. It, it, it really is, and you have to get rid of that stuff, and you have to begin to attack it. And they knew they couldn't go straight in and attack it. That's why it's been a process now since the late 1800s right. to rip that book out of the, the world's hand, That's out of the right. school's hand, That's out of right. your children's hand, out of your church's pulpits, out of the back of the pews. That's been the attack today. Amen. And so we say, well, yeah, we're in the last days. People won't endure sound doctrine. Well, we got an NIV under our arm, which is one of the most blasphemous, godless pieces of trash ever copied Amen. ever wrote down and Amen. people just want they, they just want to hear uh, false teachers and they got itching ears but if you hold one of them under your arm you might be one of them that's got the itchy ears that's right you say, well, that's mean spirited well I, it's the Ooh. spirit of God so you take it for Amen. how you want it that's right Amen. See, I've, I've calmed myself down. I've watched this that Nikki's put together at least three times so I could get myself out of my flesh before I got up here. Amen. I tried to counter that. I don't want to get up here and be in the flesh. Amen. I want to sound like these idiots. That's the way we like it in here. Amen. Amen. No, I want it the way he likes it. Amen. I want it the way Amen. he says it needs to be done. I want it to be That's that way right. this morning. Because if I do it, if Nikki does it, if Kayla does it, if we operate service the way we want to do it, which will end up being out of our flesh because no one's that spiritual, That's right. we're not going to really be having church. Amen. That's right. You, you see them concerts, people swaying around and head banging and just rocking out. You know what them people say when they leave church? Man, God was strong in that place today. Oh I felt goodness. I felt I felt so good. And I Mercy. see this in a lot of modern churches around here. We Mercy. felt so good and the and the power was so strong, not realizing it was their flesh that was being right. built up the whole time. Yeah. Buddy, I've been to concerts. They do make you feel something different. That's why you go to them. Amen. But whether that spirit of God or spirit of the Antichrist or spirit of uh, of devils today, you got to be able to discern that. That's oh, right. we got a book that can discern everything today. Amen. Now, how do you spot a counterfeit? I've shared this before. Used to, they'd hold it up to the light. Amen. That blesses my soul, Amen. brother Dwayne. To think about Amen. that. Yeah. That blesses my soul to hold it up to the light. Because we know the true light today. That's right. Amen. See, you can find a book that looks like this one, same color cover, even has those same uh, letters up here, Holy Bible. That's right. You can. That's right. But see, when you hold it up, what are they looking at when they hold it up to light? They're looking inside the bill to see That's what's right. in it. That's right. Come on now. So when you Amen. open it up Amen. and you see, okay, right. I'm not being saved. I've been saved. That's right. Okay, Jesus was yeah. born of a virgin. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When you start seeing stuff like that, right. but brother, you're holding it up to the That's light, right. and you can yeah. spot you spot right. counterfeit ten to one every time. Amen. God, God won't lead you astray today. Amen. That's what gets me with this generation. Amen. They think that God is just thrown. And I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me help you help somebody in here this morning. Listen to me. That cover may look real. You, it may look like it may have the words Holy Bible on it. Just like Dumsky, I'm gonna get to him at the end of the message. But he says, uh, uh, just because your church has a cross on it and a picture of Jesus doesn't make it a church. I got something for you, dummy. Just because you play Eminem, don't make it a church either. Amen. Woo! Amen. And he says, which environment do you think's best? Uh, 
I'd like to I'd like to buy a vowel for that one. Amen. I'm gonna go with the one that at least has a cross and a picture of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Even, even if what's in, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a big giant leap here. Some of you may disagree with this, but even if everybody's sitting in that building that's got that, that has the cross on the front and it's got pictures of Jesus in the sanctuary, even if every member in that place is dead as a hammer, I'll still take it ten to one Amen. over Eminem, right. over right. Rock and Roll, Amen. over Woo! ACDC. Amen. If you convert somebody on a highway to hell song, no. you ain't converted. Amen. 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 But see, that's mean preaching. No, you can't say that, preacher. You're limiting God. No, I, I'm dealing with God right here in this book. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm dealing with the God of this book. That's right. Not the God right. you conjured up out of your flesh. That's right. That's right. You notice he said sometimes we do it that way because that's how we like it. Yeah. Nope. That that was all I needed to hear when I watched that. Nick, that was the first thing I noticed when Nikki sent that to me because out of the heart. Uh, the mouth does speak. Out of the That's abundance right. of your heart, does your mouth speak. And so what he really said was, it's probably not scriptural, but we really like it. That's right. We really That's like right. it. And, and it ain't about what I like. And, and if you say you like them songs this morning, you, you like the the Christian songs. Let me, Amen. Let, let me clarify what I'm saying here, or I'll be on YouTube in someone else's uh, video. Uh, but but let, let me give you this this morning. I told you I had one nugget for you. One, one gold nugget. I feel it's a gold nugget. Uh, Psalms 12, 6. God says the words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Amen. Amen. That's right. How many times did he say that, church? Seven, seven, seven times. times. Your Aramaic, your old, old Testament's written in Aramaic and Hebrew. But he got that? Yes, sir. How many is that? Two. Your Greek, your, your New Testament written in Greek. Your first translation was in Old Syriac. <laughs> your second was in Old Latin. Then you had Martin Luther when he reformed up, running up and down this country, tearing the world upside down. His German translation. That leaves one more. Yeah. You know what came after that? Yeah. Your 1611 yeah. authorized. Yeah. Amen. 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 Purified seven times. That's right. That's right. Amen. So, so when you get all these jack wagons that don't know nothing from nothing and they got degrees in theology, you show them that one. Amen. So how do you explain that? Well, that's Bible numerics. and I don't, you, you, you ain't going to tell me some of that Bible numerics ain't breathed of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You, you, you ain't going to do that. Woo. He said seven times and it's purified. Brother, we got it purified. It don't need, no, it, right. it don't need nothing else anymore. That's right. <clears throat> the Word of God needs to judge us and correct us, not Amen. the other way. Amen. Amen. See, that's what scholars and theologians and professors do. They correct the Word of God. That's right, that's right. Is the Word of God for you to correct, or is no. it for God to correct you today? Yeah, right. That's right. Amen. What's happened to the church, preacher? I think it's our authority. Amen. I, I think it's because we've surrendered something that God purified seven times. Do you know how much blood was shed for that authorized version you're holding in your hand today? That's right. Amen. I, I, I consider it to be spitting in the face of God to throw that to the side and say, no, we've got something right. better. Knowing all the blood that was shed for it, all, all the all the people that had to watch their families be burned at the stake, right. had to watch their families be tortured Amen. That's right. That's right. by Amen. Roman Catholicism. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hey, someone didn't know that. And there's many others, but the Romans were the big ones in the in the middle of it. You say, I can't believe I can't believe it. Just do some research. Amen. Do some research. Learn a little history today. Amen. 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 Now I'm I've stole this this note I want to share with you this morning. But I wanna I want to deal with this. You, you ever read the prefaces of your Bibles, uh, of your Bible, your King James Bible? Now, uh, I, I want to tell you what the King James translator said when, in, in the preface, if you've never read it. We are poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known unto the people. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. My, oh, my, what a statement. Right. Right. We, we are poor instruments, he said, or all the translators said, we are poor instruments to make God's holy truth to be yet more and more known unto the people. And you know what they said after that? I never read the rest of the preface after this. Whom they desire still to keep in ignorance and darkness. You know who he's talking about? The popes, the Catholics. See, see all, your King James Bible, it's a product of what's called Reformation. That's right. I shared that little bit about William Tyndale Wednesday night where, where his bishop said it'd be better to have the pope's laws than God's laws. Anybody remember that? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and Tyndale said, if God spares my life ere many years, I will cause the boy that pushes the plow, that drives the plow, to know more than thou doest to the Scriptures. Amen. There you go. And this is William Tyndale's vision coming to light right here. Right. Amen. To make God's holy word known more and more unto all people. Amen. That means right. me today, church. That's right. Amen. See, if, if we didn't have the Reformers, 
we, we'd still be under Catholic rule and Catholic thumb. Yeah, that's right. And what you'd have is some uh, dress-wearing freak show up here in a pulpit telling you what he wants you to believe the Word of God says rather than you being able to go and seek what the that's Word right. of God says. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. But I'm talking about purified. Pure. <laughs> Amen. You know what some of that purification took? The blood of saints. That's right. The blood of saints. Now see, here's your preface of your New King James. For the first time in 370 years, the Word of God is made clear. Which one sounds arrogant to you? Amen. The word, first time in 370 years, it's made clear. And here's why I wrote these up here. This is the note I stole. He says, ask, the, ask 4 million converts of D.L. Moody. This is all King James preaching. I mean, there's multitudes. Ask 4 million of his converts how unclear the King James Version was. Ask a million of Billy Sundays how unclear the Word of God was. Ask a, uh, 4 million of George Whitfield and John Wesley how unclear the King James Bible was. And then run up and ask Bob Jones Sr. and J. Frank Norris how unclear, their million converts, how unclear the King James Bible was. You get what I'm stepping in this yeah, morning? Because that's, right. um, that's what everyone always says. Well, you just can't understand it. It's archaic. Wow. I mean, that, that's a lot of people that can't that's understand right, something. That's right, that's right. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Where have the revivals been in our nation? Where, where's the spiritual awakening been in America? Have you seen one in your lifetime? Because I ain't. I've seen revival break out in individual churches, but as a nation, even even whole towns and counties and things like it used to do back in the day, you don't see it no more. I think I got an I think I got an inclination to why. I, I, I really do. Because we don't carry authority around That's anymore. That's right. We, we've all pitched it out the door. And you can sit out there this morning and say, well, it's just always King James, King James, King James. Well, either we got the Word of God or we don't. Amen. That's right. Amen. And when you start telling people we got multiple words of God, you've, you've, you've made a problem. That's right. For a lot of people. That's right. Where have our revivals been? Uh, you know, and, and I'm going to reference a couple of revivals that happened in America, but the Great Awakening, that lasted from 1730 to 1770. That's a long Amen. revival. Right. The 1904 Welsh Revival. I've got some papers back there in my briefcase that deals with some of the things that happened at the Welsh Revival. Blow your ever-loving mind. KJV preaching. Amen. Last time America seen revival, let me finish the last name because you're going to think I'm talking about somebody else, was from 1896 to about 1935 when Billy Sunday was ripping Amen. this country up in the Soldo Trail. This is a picture I had Sister Nikki Print. Because you can't see it. That's Billy Sunday in one of his meetings. There were 6,000 men gathered there to hear the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, see, you can say, well, that one church, that, that guy has 20,000 in his church. Yeah, they ain't none of them converted. That's right. <laughs> Amen. They, they all come in and stay in their flesh and listen to That's rock songs. Right. They, they might as well be sitting at the bar on Sunday. Amen. Sunday That's right. Amen. There's no different in the bar in their church Amen. service. Amen. I can tell you that by even listening to his preaching, what he had to say. That's right. Amen. That's revival. Amen. There's 6,000 men. That's a men's meeting. Now, there was all kinds of revivals they held. But, buddy, when those came through town, things happened. That's right. That's right. I've got a book on Billy Sunday. I've read through cover to cover. And when he came through town and the Spirit of God with him and through him, the town was upside down when he got Amen. done with it. Amen. These men would go and preach and they'd have bar uh, liquor store owners threatening to kill them if they showed up to their town because the Holy Ghost would fall and people dump that stuff down the drain. Amen. And Woo! Amen. Amen. That's right. What happened in those days? That's right. We've lost our authority. That's right. Won't endure sound doctrine. We've got itchy ears. That's right. well, how do you get people into that shape? You, you mess with the Word of God. That's right. You start tearing down the doctrines that the 1611 has always had. Can I remind anyone that this book is tried and true for That's 400 right. years now? Right. See, the last time we've seen revival in America was in about 1935 was in. You say, well, Billy Graham had them big crusades. He did. He did. And Billy Graham preached a lot on being born again. I, I get on board with that kind of message. But when you start looking into who them people were directed to and led to and some of Billy's work on the uh, ASV or RV, whatever it was that he was involved in, that I lose a lot of respect then. You say, oh, that preacher thinks he's better than Billy Graham. Yep, this preacher ain't dumb enough to think that God needed his word corrected That's or fixed. Right. There you go. I, I, I'm one of them dumb guys that believes God gives us a word and it's perfect. It's about Amen. Amen. And that it don't need our filthy stinking hands on it. That's right. 
Oh, man, I, I hope anyone out in Facebook world listen Wednesday night because I know, well, so-and-so says this, and the scholars say that. I, I'll prove every one of them wrong. Amen. Right. Not because I'm good, because God showed me some things. Amen. Amen. Real simplistic things. The last time we seen revival was Billy Sunday. Amen. I'm not going to cut Billy Graham down, but I don't like some of the stuff he did. People don't like some of the stuff I do. It is what it is. That's right. But when over half your converts at your crusades are being referred to a Catholic church, Got a problem with that. Amen. God, you sent him to that godless mess. Amen. Then 1933 come along. A lot of you know what happened in this nation in 1933. The prohibition ended. Everybody know that? Yeah. Alcohol became legal. And uh, man, we're just going to be such a better nation for it. And you may be saying, well, why are you throwing that at him? Billy Sunday used to lay her down about alcohol. Amen. I mean, lay it down. Ain't it funny? He, he ran to about 35, and if you read his uh, book, he, he was still going about 35, but things were beginning to wind down. And in 1933, right in that latter end of his run, the prohibitions lifted, right? FDR, he took your gold and gave you liquor. In 1933, that's what he did for America. The biggest drastic mistake this nation's ever made Amen. was legalizing that stuff. I don't Amen. care what you say. Amen. I don't care how good you think it is, how Amen. fun it is. You're saying that because it, it pleases your flesh. That's right. right. There ain't nothing spiritual about it. Amen. That's right. That was one of the greatest downfalls. That was one of our falling aways. You say, yeah, preacher, that's, see, that's the falling away that he's talking about, how we're this and this and this and this. Well, yeah, where did it start? Where did the falling away start is what I'm asking. What has happened to our church? We had a couple of women in here this morning willing to weep over the shape of the modern church today. We need to weep Amen. for the modern Amen. church today. I don't do this to be mean-spirited. I do it to show you the shape of the modern church so maybe you'll pray for them and maybe God will shake something out of them. That's right. But until they're willing to put down the trash that they preach out of, That's right. probably ain't going to happen. That's right. You might see people led to the Lord. I've never once said you can't get saved by someone preaching out of an NIV. That's you might right. see that happen. But to see God move and revival take place, if you pitch his authority to the side and pick something else, probably ain't going to happen. That's right. That's right. Amen. You say, well, I don't know. Well, why aren't we seeing revival? That's right. That's right. You know how many people pray for revival? How many people hold revivals every year? We're fixing to have a tent revival. I'd love, I'd love to see it spread. I'd love to see it spread. Amen? Amen. Amen. But how are you going to spread it to a bunch of people around you in a, in a world that don't believe that God's word is the final authority? That's right. That's right. See, now you got a problem. Now you got people standing in the pulpit saying, Booth is okay. You got Christians that get mad at me for saying it's not okay to drink booze. Amen. I don't mean to be on the same horse, but we've had families leave before because I right. preach against alcohol. Amen. How do people get into that shit? Amen. Well, because the King James will tell you pretty clear about what God thinks about wine Amen. and strong drink. Right. But they'll find books and it'll twist. We're just seeing a beginning. If the Lord doesn't come back, you don't even want to know what kind of Bibles will come out in the next 10 years. That's right. If, if, if the versions we've got out now has got this guy to thinking that everything's on the table, yeah. we think it's going to be like when the, when, when the Bible he carries says even worse things. That's right. What's changed our authority? The only thing, the only thing these other versions have ever brought, and, and see, here's where you may disagree with me, but you will not argue this point. The only thing that other versions have brought is confusion. That's right. That's exactly not revival. Right. It's not brought revival. It's brought confusion. Amen. That's why you hear people say, well, I carry this, but I don't know. And, 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 and my, What should I carry here? Used to in this nation for a lot of years, it was one book you carried. That's right. And now it's brought confusion, not revival. Don't, like I said Wednesday, don't make a case for yourself about, I just can't understand them words. Study. Amen. You want to you pay money and study four, four years in a college and then bellyache when God wants you to do it. That's right. That's right. Muslims, they mock. They have, they have a, one of the biggest Muslim websites you can go to. One of its mockeries against Christianity is that we don't have one book, one version. And they mock God because of that. Yep. Right. They mock us. That's they right. say, well, he can't give them one book. He, they, they've got the Koran, right? And, and there's some different Korans out there, but they all say the same thing. We've got different versions that say different things. That's right. It's not brought confusion. Or it's brought confusion, not revival today, church. Right. Right. Christians don't know which book to go with. Uh, I, I'm going to share you an example. Uh, I won't even pick on Brother Dwayne. I'll pick on my wife. She had shared something on Facebook here a while back about the King James Bible. And some people had commented on it and tried to give their input. And uh, that's fine. It's America. It's a free country. Go ahead. But 
Uh, one of the comments still to this day bothers me because you hear this kind of comment from a lot of people. They said, I know the King James is the most accurate, but I like the way uh, how much easier that one is for me to read. That, that'd be like me sitting up two bottles of water. One of them's got a little bit of poison in it, and the other's pure. And you say, well, but that poison's flavored good. Right. And you say, well, I know that one's probably better for me, but that one tastes a little bit better, so that's the one I'm going to drink. That's no different that's today. Right. Yeah. If you know it's the most accurate, then get into it. Yeah. If you know what's right. probably, and, and here's what I told Wayne the other day, because a lot of people get to say this, it ain't the most accurate. It is accurate. That's right. It is perfect. That's it is right. infallible. Right. So you have people ever, oh, there's contradiction. They can't show you a contradiction in it. That's, right. That's what Amen. they say to try to beat you down in an argument. That's right. Christians don't know which book to go with. <clears throat> Can you, can, can you imagine God sitting in heaven? Here, here, here's the way the world might as well say it. In, in the modern church, they won't say it like this. Here's what they might as well say. God's sitting up there on the throne throwing different versions on us all these years. Yeah. That's the way they think. They might as well admit it. Yep, right, see, right. I found a problem with that. You go to 1 Corinthians 14.33, God is not the author of confusion. Amen. That's right. But of peace, as in all churches, as in all churches, as in all churches Amen. of the saints. He's not the author of confusion. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, they think the 1611 is confusing, so they go to a bunch of different versions, allowing more confusion that's ever been took place in this nation. That's right. Amen. Amen. God's not the author of confusion. That's anymore. right. I shared this Wednesday night, but listen to me. I'm going to say it again until I'm blue in the face. I'm sick of people making an excuse for themselves to not read the infallible Word of God. Yeah, yeah you're right. Great grandma, great grandpa dropped out of the eighth grade, and they had more wisdom in that book than a bunch that's of scholars right, today. Right. Yeah. yeah, and like like I like I shared Wednesday night, you you come to a word like "tro" or something, and you're well, I just can't understand it. Get you a dictionary and look it up. Amen. That's right. My gosh, man, and I shared that Wednesday night. You ever read a book completely through any other book and understood everything you read the first time? You know why God did that? You know why God did that? I figured this out a long time ago. I know why God made it harder to understand. So we keep coming back and seeing it. That's right. Amen. If He left it, didn't give it all to you right off the top, but you, you know how. You're just like me. You get something whipped, you get it figured out, you don't usually go back to it. Right. You're done with right. it. Yep. I'm done. And God said, well, I know what's in man. That is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Yep. And he said, I'm going to throw these archaic words in there. And I'm going to make it a little harder to understand the, this oracle and this doctrine and this and that. That way they keep coming back and getting some. Yeah. That's right. That way they seek me with all their heart, their soul, and their strength. Amen. See, we'll do that for everything out here in the world. But That's when it comes right. to the Word of God, we ain't got time for it. It's too hard. Give me something easier to understand. Uh, I know it's more accurate, but I just I'd rather have this one over here. No, I want what's right. That's right. I want what's right. I want what's right. I want what's right. Yep. What's right. Amen. Amen. I, I, I've challenged a couple buddies of mine. I got I got one buddy I've been dealing with. He'll know I'm talking about it. That's okay. I can call him my name. But he's been trying. He's been trying. He's about yep. to come off of it completely and be in that. And I don't I don't glory in that like I've done something great. But I know he'll get more out of that than he ever will Amen. anything else. Amen. But you know what the problem is? The enemy just comes up to you every time you That's open right. that. That's right. You don't understand yeah. that. That's too hard to understand. Yeah. You don't get this. You don't get that. It ain't for you to understand all That's at once. Right. Yeah. And it ain't for us to make it un try to make it where lost people can understand all of it either. That's right. There's one thing lost people need to understand. Except you repent, you shall likewise also Amen. perish. Amen. Then you can turn over to John chapter 3, verse 3. Except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. That's what yeah. lost people need to understand. That's right. They don't need about the. They don't need to know about the doctrine of baptisms. They don't need to know about the the, the second coming. They don't need to understand everything about right. that. That's right. They need to understand they're a sinner and they need Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. But I can tell you right now, if one was here this morning, I'd let her rip too. Probably worse than I ever have. But uh, we we got one that needs Jesus. I've been praying yep. for her hard. Amen. Yep. Amen. But I'm telling you right now, this morning, look what's attacked. That's yeah, right. that's, that's right. I, I, thought about, I know the verse ain't dealing with versions, but I, I like to think, you know, sort of what God thinks about stuff on, on, on like what we're preaching about a lot of times. Jesus said said to men, he said, woe, woe unto you when men speak highly of you. Right? Does anybody remember that? Yeah. Yeah, if everybody likes you and everybody thinks you're the greatest and everybody thinks you're the best thing, since sliced bread, woe unto you. That's right. Amen. Yeah. A man that ain't got enemies ain't in a man at all today. That's right. I'll tell you that. That's right. If, you, if you're doing what God's called you to do, you're going to have some enemies. That's right. Yep. That's the way it is. 
And I thought about that in the terminal versions, like everybody thinks that this one out here is the best, and it's the best, and it's the best, and that's what everybody speaks highly of. That's right, that's right. Everyone calls this archaic and outdated. It says it's wrong, and uh, Charlie had sent me a deal, which I'd already seen it, but he sent it to me, and someone had made a meme about, and, and the meme was inevitably saying uh, the King James translators put too much stuff in the book. No, they didn't. Amen. <laughs> no, they didn't. No, they didn't. Now I'm going to deal with this real briefly and say a few more things. That flat iron church, that's the godless bunch of mess I've ever seen in all my natural years. Amen. 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 I'd love to sit and just pick every word a party said, but I'm just telling you, surely to goodness, everyone here have enough brains to discern what all he said and how dumb it was. That's right. That's right. He said, everything's on the table. Here's what I want to do with everything's on the table. That's what he said. You can go back and watch it. Sister Nikki's got her laptop. What he's saying is you can use anything out here in the world to get someone to Jesus. Now, God can use anything to get someone to Jesus, Amen. but it will never be right. filth and That's wickedness right. Right. in terms of glorifying Woo. it Amen. above himself. Amen. See, that's where these dummies don't learn in school. God don't use filth in, in the manner... I mean, you may be drunk, and God speak to you, and you get saved. That's right. That's right. But he's right. never going to expect you to hold up beer out here in the auditorium and say, get everyone drunk and preach them the gospel that they may be saved. That's not... Amen. And that's what they're doing. Right. Now. And then we 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 seen all the worldly music, right? Uh, Eminem and all them guys. And listen, don't don't act like I don't know. Music is a bad problem for me. I love music. Amen. I loved music when I was lost, and I love it when I'm saved. Right. And when you get the old flesh in there, just listen. Uh, and, and you may think I'm dumb for this, but I used to love Nirvana. And so when Nikki plays that, I have to hear that, and I have to fight myself Amen. because I used to love that kind of music. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So don't act like I don't know when I'm holier than thou. <laughs> But now, this is one of the reasons I've tried to be mindful and warn you guys about the, a lot of the Christian music played in churches. Because right. it sounds real close to that. Yep. Right. Now, you can, get, you can let that get you all riled up and mad. That's fine. But I'm just telling you, if, if you know that worldly music stirs you up in this, your flesh, and then you bring that kind of same sound into the sanctuary, yep. now, you're, now you're left to try to discern whether you're feeling spirit or whether you're feeling flesh. Right. And I, I'm not against new music. If people think that I'm not. There's God's still writing music. I'm aware of that. Right. But buddy, that headbang, and I, will, I, I got one that will disagree with me on this, and that's fine. But Christian rap, I got no use for it. Amen. Amen. It's not a matter of taste. It sounds like the world. Right. Yep. It's no different portraying the same image through Christian music as it is the world music a lot of times. That's right. Now, Amen. that being said... There's songs with lyrics that glorify God right. in modern Christian music. Right. Uh, Nikki and them sing, uh, There Was Jesus. You ain't going to tell me that. I don't glorify God when it's sung. Amen. Right. I, I don't think Zach Williams knows the Lord from Adam, but I'm just telling you, the still lyrics, i got no problem Amen. with them. Right. I don't. But, but when you get people like McCray and these Christian rappers, mm-hmm. I, I got $100 to a donut that says, You ain't getting pumped up in the spirit. Your flesh. Is latching on, and you're thinking about how you used to feel listening to Eminem and Dr. Dre and all them. And, buddy, it, a counterfeit. That's yeah. right. It has the appearance of God, but it's not quite God. Right. Yep. yep. See, we got to be real careful of that stuff. And I, you, you listen to whatever you want. I don't control your radio, nor do I want to. But that's why I try to warn us to be careful of that stuff. Amen. It starts innocent, then it ends up in like what we watched. Yep. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He said, everything's on the table. Now, uh, I, I'm going to deal with that real quick. Y'all remember over there in the book of John when Jesus jumped up in the chariot and he told them to take him over to the hood and play him and him and Dre so they could come in there oh, and God. listen to his sermon on the mount? Anybody remember that? No, no one does. It's because it ain't in your Bible. That's right. Amen. That's right. Or the time he rolled over to the country and he said, hey, you blast some Hank Jr. and Tyler Childers. We'll get him in here that way. Huh? With Hank Jr. singing, if heaven ain't a lot like Dixie, I don't want to go. Oh, man. I'm marked for life. About Hank Jr. because I, I used to love him so much. I got a tattoo right here of a Ruger symbol. Now that I'm saved, I can tell people it's a Ruger symbol. But but you see, I know about music. Yeah. I'm not I'm not holier than thou. I know about the lure right. and the desire of music. Me and Tim Baxter could sing you every lyric to almost any Hank Jr. song you probably spit off because we knew mo- more than most people knew. We wasn't just all the big five songs everyone knows about Hank Jr. I had every album. I listened to every song. I mean, I was obsessed with it. But then he's got songs like If Heaven Ain't a Lot Like Dixie, I Don't Want to Go. Are you ignoramus? <laughs> I, I, I mean, however heaven is, I know it's better than here. Right. Then you got, you got Dwayne back here sharing that Tyler Childers song with me to let me hear. He says, uh, if, if I can't run my hounds in heaven, I'm going to load up my box, 
and uh, go with my friends to hell. Oh my God! Well, that's intelligent. Oh. That's, that's a good idol for these kids. That's somebody oh, they need to look mercy. up to. That's somebody they need to look up to. Uh, and and y'all remember when Jesus went over into the Cleveland sect? He said, "Hey, you jam some ACDC, some Marilyn Manson." You hear what the preacher said? Let's melt our faces off. No, he's gonna melt, all right. He's gonna melt. Not 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 us today if we're saved. I'm going to give them just a minute because i got a few more points I want to make. And then we're going to finish up. Come weep for your church this morning. Come weep for the heresy. Come weep for the, weep for the, the wickedness taking place. Come weep for those that are being misled by the Word of God, the words of God, and not knowing which is which this morning. I'm going to hit the same point here for a minute while we're praying. Jesus never one time ever jumped in and played him and him and Drake. said, well, they weren't created yet. Well, he didn't play whoever was doing it back then if there was anybody. Quit using the filth of this world and the filth of your flesh to try to justify winning sinners. If you don't win them with the blood of Christ, you ain't winning them at all. That, that, we, we know that to be scripturally true and scripturally sound this morning. I want us to show me one place this morning. One place. If you... You can prove me wrong this morning by after church meeting me back there by the foyer and showing me one place where Jesus made sinners look to the world and look at the filth of the world to be saved. I want you to show me that. You won't, you won't find it. It's always about Him. I've come to do the will of Him that sent me. Except ye repent, ye shall likewise also perish. See, you never find one time where Christ or any of the apostles, see that guy said, uh, Peter and them guys, they quoted, they quoted music, godless music. They quoted... Uh, different religious false gods and this and that. I know which scripture he's talking about and where, where Paul went in. Uh, I forget the name of the town, but it said uh, to the God of the unknown. Well, Paul went in there and he told them who the unknown God was. He, he didn't, they didn't quote wicked things of their time to win them. And that guy can't show you one verse. He can't show you one verse where, where Jesus, Peter, Paul, any of them ever done that. Never ever once had them look to the filth of the world and the wickedness of the world to get led to the Lord. Here, let me let me just let me wind up this morning. First Corinthians fifteen two. I shared this Wednesday night. Your KJV says to you that are saved, meaning you know you're saved. In your ESV, in by which you are being saved. See, here's the problem today, Brother Gary. People used to know that they were saved. And when you know you're saved, you have, you live a saved life, and you have church like saved people. That's right. Yep. But see, the ecumenical trash that the Catholics and all them are trying to wind up and, and get everybody into, they want you to think you're working to be saved. That's right. That way, we're always imperfect. We're always less than 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 the bars here, and we're always down here. So we just live however we want to live because we're never going to attain this until we get to heaven. And some of that's true. That's right. But God has called us to holiness. To strive for holiness, to live for holiness, to try to be holy. But see, when you don't know that you're saved, you ain't going to live saved. And you ain't going to have church like you're saved. So here's what I'm going to say in closing this morning. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Right. It's impossible to please God without faith. Because <laughs> whosoever cometh to God, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You can disagree with this till you're blue in the face. I'm finishing up this morning. You can disagree with this till you're blue in the face. But, but when you've got a book that can't pin Him down, amen? When you've got a book that can't pin Him down, it can't seem to really tell you who He is, it, 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 one, one, one spot over in John, it makes Jesus a liar. You think the authority of God's on that mess? You, you think God's going to revive, revive this nation and something like that? No. You have to believe that He is God. I want you to tell me something this morning. Anything you've ever really, 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 really learned about God, uh, aside from a preacher, which I, I can use that in a sentence this morning, where did you learn it from? The Word of God. You can say, well, I've learned it from preachers. Well, you know where your preacher was preaching from? The Word of God. So, what makes us think we can tamper with it, we can jack the doctrines up, we can mess things around, we can put everyone into confusion... And expect us to be in a great state spiritually this morning. What's happened to the church? Well, number one, 
our, our shouting. We don't get it. We don't get on fire for God anymore because we're ate up with this trash. And you know why a lot of them don't shout anymore because they're ate up with false wicked trash. Amen. We lost our weeping. I believe we. I, I believe everything I preached on the last three weeks can be tied in to our authority. Yeah. When you take the authority out of the house, everything else goes with it. Yeah. And you say, well, you just King James, BB King. I'm sick of hearing about. I. I'm sick of hearing about that. Right. Amen. I'm sick of seeing this. That's Amen. Right. Why don't we start investigating and try to figure out where it's come from so Amen. we don't make the same mistake. That's right. That's right. Amen. I'll tell you right now, you ain't going to worry about me. Oh, only way you'll ever see me change gears is when I change gears from here to go to glory. Amen. Woo! Amen. I ain't changing them on this. I ain't changing them in the way the church functions. I ain't changing them in the way of witnessing and trying to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ right. and preaching against sin. See, what Airhead back here wants you to believe is that you can't win nobody by preaching about those things. I've got several million here that will win by preaching a lot harder than I've ever Amen. preached. They said Billy Sunday would tear the ever-loving floor up in them places and call her out. Look at that. Look at all the men. Hey, that looks like modern church because it's dark. Oh, that's because people desired to come hear the Word of God and it was night. That's right. Amen. I don't understand everything about everything this morning. But I can tell you one thing, in my research, in my study, in my prayer, and my in my trying to be listening to the Holy Ghost and all that, I see one common denominator that's a problem everywhere I look. The authority's gone. That's right. You know what's wrong with our youth today? It's always the authority of the home. There's no authority there. And, and see, we'll talk about that, how kids need to be, they need to have authority and they need to have this, but then we'll rip the actual authority out. That's the authority. That's, right. that's how your children are supposed to be raised. That's how your marriage is supposed to be tended Amen. to and function. Right. That, that, that's how your church is supposed to be ran. Right. That, that's how everything's supposed to go Amen. this morning. Amen. Right. Amen. And you can disagree with it all you want, but I don't think God's within 10 miles of most of that stuff. That's right. I, I, I Amen. Know God, I know God can save anybody. He, he, he said them stones could cry out. I, I know God can use anything this morning. But you want to grow, you want to have the Spirit of God, you want to have the fire of God, you want to have the power of God, I believe it lies right there. Amen. Amen. You can disagree with that, but you tell me how we got into heaping uh, to ourselves teachers having itchy ears. You tell me how we got into won't endure sound doctrine. Right. That was a revelation I had yesterday. Good. And you may be thinking, well, how is that a revelation? Because I just never really thought about it in that, that detail. How did we get there? How, how did the church fall into that apostasy? Where did it come from? It had to start somewhere. Well, who's going to be the one that leads that? Does God want us to be... Heaping to ourselves teachers? Does God want us to listen to false teachers? Does God want us to not endure sound doctrine? No, that sounds like the enemy to me. Right. What's the, okay, then I said, what's the enemy always been after? The Word of God. Yeah, yeah. amen. It's like a simple math equation this morning. It just blew my mind, but I'm just telling you right now. There'll be people that won't like that, they'll disagree with that, and that's fine, it's America. Amen. Melt your heart out this morning. That's right. But you want to you know what I think caused all that, Sister Nikki played for us this morning? Getting away from the authority. That's right. That's right. Getting away from the authority. Yeah. Used to people tried to live clean. Even people that were godless heathens had morals back then. That's right. That's right. Yep. Used to people tried to live clean. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating this point, but when people know they're saved, that's a whole di different atmosphere than people that are trying that's to work right. themselves in salvation. Right. Yep. I'm saved this morning. <laughs> you you yeah, saved I'm in here saved. this morning? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah, you believe that's the book? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Now, now you can get somewhere. Now God can do something with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to have one little verse altar call. I know there's some people already came and been faithful to the Lord. I didn't mean to interrupt or hinder any of that. I just want to share those last few points. But let's stand this morning. I'd, I'd encourage anybody to come up here and look at this picture and just look back there. I mean, it, it, it's unreal. Where does that time went, church? Where does it went? Why, why don't we have that anymore? You say, well, we do, we do. Well, it ain't as real as that when it come out, come right. out like that. Amen. That that here, that guy here, that puke. That, that, I'd stifle my vomit to listen to that. That's horrible. And I didn't even pick on all the other preachers. Train up a child in the way he should go, and the way that they should go is Led Zeppelin. You idiot. He said, you don't have to be a Christian, but there's some things like Jimi Hendrix. You can't force your kid to be a Christian, but why would you tell him, hey, listen, you don't have to be, but you're going to know all about Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, he's a great role model. Great role model. See, a lot of people think fur takes the man. I can tell you right now, God ain't within 10 miles of that dude. Amen. You make statements like that, not in within 10 miles of him. <clears throat> you got a need this morning, come pray. I know we already had a little altar call, but we'll give everyone a chance this morning. Weep for the church. 
Weep to the shake the ten. Suffering and shame for you. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners. You know, so, not what most people would call a so Sunday morning message, but I'm telling you right now, we got problems in this nation and in this world. We got problems this morning. problems in our nation this morning. You men come up here if you will. Help us pray up the altar. God, I pray this morning, Lord, that you would help us. Any of the men up here at the altar too, you would help them, guide them, lead them, and direct them, Father Lord. God, I want to thank you for conviction, God. Lord, we need to not sorrow over godly conviction or repent over godly conviction. Like Paul said, we need to be thankful. For godly conviction, Father, I pray that you would help us, you'd touch us, you'd encourage us, you'd lift us up, Father, Lord, I don't mean that in a modernistic way, Father, I know your word, even when it cuts us, it lifts us up in the end, Father, God, I thank you for that, Lord, I pray you just touch each and every person in this building this morning, God, Lord, you give us a desire for lost souls, you give us a desire to live for you, Father, help us to be each day better than we was the day before, Father, in our service to you, Lord, I pray that you would just touch those that were listening this morning. God, I'm ready for, I've already prepared myself for any kickback, feedback, or mouth back this morning, Father Lord, out in Facebook world or wherever. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to stand and fight for you, Father, and for your word this morning. I, I, I'm not afraid. I'm not scared. Not really ever have been anyway, but Father Lord, I'm not worried about what the, the naysayers would say this morning. I ain't worried about people with their degrees. I ain't worried about people that had higher education and think they know better, Father. I know. I know within my soul this morning, God, that you give us a word so that people like me, people as dumb as me, could have some authority and have some direction this morning, Father Lord. And I don't have to learn it from someone with a, uh, a scholarly degree or anything of that nature, Father Lord. I don't doubt what your word says. I believe it's infallible. I believe it's perfect. I believe it's just like the Lamb of God without spot and without blemish this morning. For he is the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And Father, Lord, I feel if they're taking a stab at that book, they're taking a stab at my Savior this morning, Father. Lord, I love you. I praise you. And I ask it all in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray you bless this food. Lord, this morning that has been prepared, uh, bless the hands that's prepared it. Give us a good time of fellowship. I pray you touch Brother Charlie. Give him liberty as we gather back in here a little this afternoon. And just touch him, Father God, and make it easy for him this afternoon. Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We ask it in the name of Jesus and by his precious blood. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.